Hello everyone, my name is Tom Flynn. I'm a multimedia designer based in London. Uh, among some of the things that I do as part of my job um, is making 3D photo scans of cultural heritage uh, objects. And um, I put a lot of them up on Sketchfab, either for myself or for, for example, museums. And I wanted to make this video to share with you um, my workflow for what I do with models um, after I've created them in something like Photoscan or 123D Catch and uploaded them to Sketchfab and how I use the inbuilt texturing and post effects um, to make things um, look nice in the browser. Um, I, should, I should mention that um, what this video is going to be showing um, doesn't apply to every um, photo scan and you can often get great results just by clicking shadeless in the uh, rendering options and um, you're good to go. So what I want to show you today is um, maybe adding a bit more uh, of dramatic effect and um, heightening kind of some of the details in a model um, once you've uploaded it. <coughs> so I've got here, I've got a model of um, this uh, guy called Adrian or Hadrian. Um, it's a bust from the Archaeological Museum in Seville. So you can see the, um, the model is, is fairly, fairly detailed. Um, it's uh, 30,000 um, faces and uh, it's not bad. Once, if I turn on the um, texture as well, um, what you'll be able to see is, that, however, that there's a lot more detail, um, for example, in the hair um, when you turn the texture on than when, when it's off. Um, and that's some, one of the details that we're, we're gonna kind of bring out going to bring out a bit um, when we upload the model to Sketchfab. So once um, you've created your model and exported it, what you should have is a, uh, a set of three files, uh, the 3D file, I'm using uh, an OBJ, uh, a material file, and um, the texture file, I'm using a JPEG here as well. <coughs> so um, to get it into Sketchfab, I've, I've logged in and um, I can just click and drag and drop these into my browser and it will start start uploading. Um, obviously you can put in your title and description and categories and things like that. Um, so let's uh, get going. Things are being processed and we're just going to jump straight into the edit 3D settings. Um, so what I, I wanted to show is, is oh, what you can do with, uh, just turn this guy the right way up, um, what you can do with just a, a single texture and how you can affect the, uh, the look of your model um, just by using the diffuse texture. Um, so in the edit settings, uh, we'll, we'll kind of try and do things by, by tab. So in, in the first scene, um, what I'm going to do is um, switch to PBR um, and make sure it's on lit, which it should be. Um, and we'll come back to the post-processing filters for later. Um, so what we'll start doing is, is working on materials. So uh, we've only got one material, which is the uh, JPEG that we uploaded. Um, let's just zoom in a bit. So already you can kind of see like how the, how the model looks um, with the PBR rendering on it. It's kind of shiny, um, but maybe looks a little bit plasticky. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is just set a few of the um, maps to that diffuse texture and this is not necessarily a um, the best workflow um, obviously this isn't a specular map you could use something like crazy bump or or similar to generate all of your other different maps but um, as a quick way to, to make things look good um, I found that just um, setting the diffuse uh, texture um, to each of these maps um, can give you some pretty nice results so um, you can already see I can I can fill around with that you should be able to see kind of the what we're doing there is is basically changing how shiny our object looks. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for our roughness glosses, glossiness, glossiness map um, and actually switch to glossiness as opposed to roughness um, because we're working with marble here this gives a I think a, a better softer kind of reflection um, so I'll leave that at 100 for now. Um, probably the one that will give the, the most dramatic ef effect, I think, for, for how the, the model will look um, is the bump map. And I'm just gonna kind of find an angle that's gonna demonstrate kind of what, what this is gonna do. 
so, so we've got all, all of this this hair and beard going on um, and again I'll just um, show you kind of uh, if I switch to, to mat cut mode in the bottom here this kind of shows you how light is reflecting off the model so at the moment um, we're not really getting anything that's kind of showing any detail um, but if I simply just select our diffuse texture and as the bump map um, you should be able to see if I start turning it up we're getting a lot more detail in our reflections so I'm just going to crank it all the way up just so it's really obvious so you can see straight away that this makes a big difference to how the model is, is going to look um, kind of the eyes are coming coming out a bit the mouth everything is kind of much more uh, looks much more detailed I mean what we're doing here is kind of faking the geometry because it's not really there so again on the breastplate you can see the difference that this bump map is going to make so if I switch back to the default rendering uh, so what I want to do is kind of now that I've um, adjusted this map is I want to make it really obvious using a bit of lighting um, we'll come, maybe we'll come back to some of these other maps um, depending on how things are looking in, in a minute so in, in the lighting I'm going to pick a different skybox um, that's a nice one I quite like the tropical ruins as as a background um, I'm just going to turn down the brightness a bit so you can turn down the brightness of the actual background which doesn't affect the lighting or you can you can adjust the brightness of the light that is actually playing on your PBR model there as well so I'm going to turn that the background down a little bit um, so again you should be able to, to see kind of how how that bump map is adding adding detail to to the model um, so I'll put put it at about 85 put it exactly on 85 um, and then look at kind of how how the model is lit so at the moment the face isn't so um, well lit which is kind of maybe what we want uh, for this so using the orientation back in the lighting tab I'm just going to spin it around so that the kind of the doorway in, in this uh, background is actually facing the front so actually that gives you a really nice kind of uh, look at kind of what's happening maybe I'll zoom in a bit again um, so I'm using a 4k texture for this model but you could obviously do this, the same same thing with a, a smaller texture depending on how fast you want your model to load um, so I think that looks that looks nice kind of as it is let's just jump back to the materials tab and have a look at uh, adding a cavity map um, so again I mean I'm not adding a cavity map I'm adding the diffuse texture to the uh, cavity map uh, option um, and so the cavity map obviously accentuates cavities um, and it works on the, the grayscale of the input image so this is obviously affecting the whole of, of, our, of our model um, Normally what I do is I spend just a bit of time like kind of tweaking out and seeing which which maps give me the desired effect. Um, in fact, maybe I don't even want to adjust that. And what I'll do is adjust the metalness just to make things a bit shinier. Well, I don't know, maybe I'll roll that back again. Cool. Well, I'm pretty happy with, with how this is looking. Um, let me zoom out a bit, oh, it's still a bit wonky, let's adjust that, you can do that with the um, show advanced rotation checkbox, um, should probably have done this in the modeling program, but there you go. Um, so, now that we've kind of got things, generally how we're looking at them, we'll add a bit of pizzazz with the post-processing. Um, so there's a few post-processing effects that I normally go to when I upload a model. One is sharpness. As soon as you switch it on, um, I don't know if you can see this on, on the video, um, it has quite a, a big effect, but it can also look a bit weird. So I'm going to 
turn it down to about 15. Uh, so you get a tiny, tiny bit of sharpness. It's probably really difficult to tell up to 20, but it does crisp things up a little bit, which is which is quite nice. I'll skip chromatic aberrations because that's a bit, bit of a rock and roll effect for this this model. I will add a little vignette. I like that. It kind of makes things feel a little bit more intimate to me. And I'm going to switch on bloom so that our model's got a bit of glow. Um, that's maybe a bit much, um, something a bit more, a bit more subtle. Um, but that's also nice when kind of you spin the model around and you get a bit of bloom coming, coming in from the background, as you can see there. Um, I think it's nice because it just gives you a bit more of a sense of, of space. Um, but like I said, you could equally to cut out um, a lot of your workload, just upload a model and um, set it to, to shadeless. But going back to the uh, post-processing effects, I'm going to turn on tone mapping and just tweak this just a little bit to get it how I like. Um, so just a bit of contrast and I'm adjusting the exposure a very tiny, tiny amount so that things aren't kind of bleaching, bleaching out. Um, so again, you should be able to sort of see kind of how that bump map, the bump map pretty much the one that makes the difference uh, as far as I'm concerned um, and then we'll leave the color balance how it is so and we'll just line it up to you know where, where we want it for our thumbnail click that so people will see that when they're, they're browsing around um, I mean with, with, with annotations just one, one last brief thing you might want to add in a bit of direction so people um, get directed to some sort of interesting parts. It's still not quite straight, is it? Um, just going to adjust that. There we go. Um, so I just want to draw people's attention to this. Uh, I'm just going to call this information. Um, so I've adjusted the view and then just double clicked to, to add this annotation and I'll put it underneath just because that's hopefully going to be easy to read. If I want to zoom in a bit and, and change this, lock the view again for this annotation, I can just click the little photo there uh, and let's say that we wanted to zoom in a bit on this. So uh, navigating the model, um, it's just regular uh, click and drag for spinning it around, but if you want to uh, pan the model around, uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm, I'm holding control to do that, so I think it's probably similar on uh, a Windows machine as well. So I also want to add a view that kind of centers on the breastplate. A very imaginative title there, breastplate. Um, and then one last one nice close-up on old Adrian's face. I'm going to put the annotation over here. Adrian, Adriano, Adrian, lots of different names depending on where you're from. So if I save all those settings, I'm just going to publish, actually no, I'm not going to publish, but I will save the settings. Um, because I've already got a version of this model up on my profile, so I don't want to have it up twice. Um, let's go back. Um, we're still in draft mode. And there we are. So we've got our, our model up, um, and obviously you just publish it, and then other people can see it as well. Um, run through our annotations, quick tour of the model, and you can see some of those effects there. Um, I hope that's given you a uh, you know, a bit of an idea of how you could uh, use some of Sketchfab's um, 3D settings to uh, adjust how a model model looks. Um, if uh, just one one last thing, we could we could compare kind of how this looks as a how this looks in shadeless mode, which is completely fine. I think it gives you a definite idea of what the um, the model look the 
bust rather looks like and then flipping back to shaded mode maybe I've gone a bit too far on the uh, specularity there I could bring that down a bit but um, I kind of like having it so that the the light basically gives you a greater sense of three dimensions in my opinion I hope uh, like I say give, it's given you a few ideas and uh, happy modeling <laughs>